This tutorial shows how to put together the rocky field setting for the pop-up terrain. And of course, again, a review of the tools. I've got X-Acto knife, I've got extra blades in case something snaps. I've got a, a metal ruler. Uh, and uh, here's my extra blades. This old credit card, well, it's a gift card <laughs> to use to spread the glue. And that needs to happen, and we're ready to go. So let's start off again with base textures. We mark which we know which corners need to be bent. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is cut that out, and uh, use a ruler. It makes it go a little faster. So again, when you cut with an X-Acto knife, use a sharp blade. Always cut uh, as if you're pulling the knife. It's okay to cut towards you as long as there's a table between you and the X-Acto knife. Do not cut your fingers. That's the first rule of X-Acto knife safety. While you've got your corners here, you know which ones to cut, which ones to, uh, sorry, to use to fold. And you fold the opposite sides together, so it folds corner to corner. Match them up. Fold it flat. And I'll set for that part. This piece, uh, put some water texture on there. You can use that for something later if you want. For now. We are moving on to the process of cutting out our base material. And uh, you can be a little more economical about your space by planning it out a little bit better. Let's see, let's put this here. And you can kind of use your scoring tool to trace along the edge if you want. you an idea where to cut. Use your ruler. Make sure you're not cutting on top of anything that you need later. I'm fortunate enough to have these fantastic self-healing cutting mats that um, really are great to work with if you're doing any sort of cutting over a long period of time. Plus, right when you open them, right out of the bag, they smell exactly like new Ninja Turtles from the 1980s. It just brings me back to when I was nine. Christmas of... So it would have been 1990. Opening up a new Rat King miniature or something. Rat King toy. Boy, those were the days. So then you can just kind of trace your other one here. And that way you preserve this space so you can make another uh, terrain base up there. So use your space wisely. Kind of plan out where you're going to cut things on your, on your board and you'll be able to get more mileage out of them. Not that you need to. They're cheap. They're inexpensive. You know, you could get you can get one of these at Walmart for like a dollar and fifteen cents or something. So, especially now that school's back in, that'll be easier to find. All right. So you've made this, and if you're like me, you may have created a slight tilt. You want to line those up. You want to line these boards up. Create a slight, uh, you know, angle on the boards. 
I'll put that right up there. So anyway, this comes down at a slight angle. I put them together so the largest part of any gap is on the bottom, and that will actually, you know, the bigger the gap, the better, really, because it'll make it so that your boards lay flat. If there, if there's any tension there between the boards, it makes it so the boards don't lay flat. So, <clears throat> well, I mean, you can. There's ways to work around that, but better to have the problem solved before you even start. So let's go ahead and glue this down. Put a good amount of glue on there. Spread it around with your uh, professional spreading tool. Credit card. Piece of foam core or something. If you're not getting it all the way to the edge, it's not going to do its job. So make sure that the glue, you have enough glue on there to spread all the way to the edge. If you need to add more glue, it's fine. Just get it to the edge. Alright, it's easiest if you line up this long side, because that's the side that really needs to line up. Anything else you can kind of trim up, but this is really the essential part, so you line it up right on the edge with the fold. Spread it flat. Just use your hands if you've done it right. It's looking good so far. Let's do the other side. Glue, 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 glue. That's what's going on in my head when I glue. Like I'm just saying the word glue over and over again. I don't know if you guys do that, but spread, spread, spread. That's that's how I work. All right. Easiest way to do this: put them next to each other. Make sure your corners are lined up. Right here and here, and then you just flop it over right into place. Don't worry if you got a little extra space on the sides, it's a little bit of white space, you can trim that up later. That is one of the nice things about the foam core board is that it just trims so easily. Alright, wipe the glue off your hands, let that dry over here, We're ready to move on to cutting out the parts. Now, scoring the parts. Forget I said cutting out. Scoring the parts, okay? So, we got our parts, and as you can see here, these parts are all labeled uh, RF. See that? And that, so, cut out all the parts labeled RF. They're going to be on two pages. They're going to be on page 8 and page 4. So, uh, we're going to cut all those out. Well, first we're going to score them all. Then we're going to cut them all out. And then... Uh, move on to the next stage. So let's score. Now to score, you draw from one uh, blue triangle to the other, just draw along the line, along the other lines. Again, the darker ones, here let's make sure I'm zoomed in on the right spot. The darker ones are for, sco for uh, scoring for a mountain fold and the ones that don't have the extra dark spot are for scoring for a valley fold. Now you don't really need to worry about that unless you get stuck at a spot you want to know which way to fold it uh, and you can always look back at your PDF copy if you've already cut them out and you'll know which way it's supposed to fold. So that is that and now we score. So from one blue thing to the other blue thing I like to do all my horizontals first, then I switch to verticals, so that way I can keep track of it. And as long as you've got, as long as you, you can kind of feel a little bump with your fingernail, if you scrape it across the surface, that's all you need. Just press firmly with your dried out ballpoint pen or other scoring tool. I <laughs> don't use the back of an X-Acto knife. I've seen people try to do that. It's the worst. Uh, just scrapes it up. It's hard to get deep enough without ruining what you're doing. And I would say it's a horrible idea. So, dried out ballpoint pen. Perfect scoring tool. And if you don't score before you cut out, you can, you can score them later. But again, it's going to be hard to know where <laughs> to score them. Um, 
so, I mean, you'll have your PDF. You can always look it up again. Uh, yeah. scored all the parts for this one. Now it's time to cut. Time to cut. So cut out all the parts that are labeled RF and then I'll be ready to go. So I'll probably fast forward through that part. All right, so right here I've got a weird bubble. So what I'm gonna do is cut someplace where no one's ever gonna see that. Let the air escape, push it down. If you have a bubble in your thing, try to cut it in a place where no one will ever see. But honestly, it'll probably be fine if you have a bubble. <laughs> it'll be fine. All right, so we're moving on to the next part where we glue stuff down. We look at the instructions for Rocky Field it says we should start gluing R1 and then glue R2 through R16. So what that means is we find the space on the board that says R1, okay, on, this, on the glue spot. And that is going to be right here, this little spot right here, okay? So we find the piece, which is this little piece here. It glues on there. We bend where we scored. We make sure the arrows are pointing the same way for R1 and R2, and we make sure the ground textures line up perfectly. And if the ground textures don't line up where you're gluing something, or the wall textures, it still might be the right place, but take the time to make sure you're gluing at the right place, that your arrows are going the same way. Uh, the arrows don't have to line up exactly when you're gluing it down, but they do need to be going the same way. And if you've got that, then you are going to be avoiding uh, a lot of a lot of trouble in the making of this. So once you glued something down, go ahead and fold it flat. Make sure it folds flat. Uh, let's zoom back out so you can actually see what I'm doing. Make sure it folds flat. If it doesn't fold flat, I want to work on it a little bit. And you might actually want to put glue on the parts you're gluing down. So glue down R1. Now I'm gluing down R2. Making sure everything is in its proper space, making sure the ground textures are aligned perfectly so that everything works out later. Okay? If those ground textures are lined up, you should have no trouble at all doing it. Okay? So next you are going to glue down the other stuff, R3 and R4. Go right here, facing arrows, facing the same way. And the arrows don't have to line up, they do need to be facing the same way, and make sure your ground texture lines up so that the stuff looks good on the ground there. Again, once you've glued a piece down in place on this one, you shouldn't ever hesitate to just fold it flat and make sure that everything's working the way it should. If, you get, if your edge starts to come up a little bit, just glue it down. Make sure your edges are down. That'll prevent some of the wear and tear you might see. Fold it flat while it's still wet. If you try to fold everything flat at once at the end, it's uh, it'll feel like it's breaking. It won't actually be breaking. You've done everything right. You have to power through it, smash it flat. But if you if you uh, if you go ahead and fold it every time along the way, 
it will work out a lot better. So now we've got R5 and R6. Glue those on down. Again, make sure the ground texture lines up. Things will just go a lot more smoothly if you do. You can check that before you glue. Unless you're like me and you're an impatient sort of a fellow. There you go. All right. Uh, Next we've got R7, that's R8, uh, R7, and R8 again, With ground textures, make sure they're lining up, if you're seeing double of something then you know you're gluing at the wrong space, something seems to end abruptly right at the line where you're gluing stuff down, probably gluing at the wrong place. So, just make sure you're gluing it in the right spot, and pop it on down. Alright, uh, R9, This one's pretty straightforward. Most of the glue stuff you're going to be doing is just gluing stuff to the ground. And again, make sure those ground textures line up. That'll solve, you know, that'll keep you out of a lot of heartache. This process. All right, so this should fold flat at this point. Will it pop back up at this point? Probably not. Some of these things are not quite supported yet, but go ahead and fold it flat. Make sure it folds flat. Okay. And that's looking great. Everything's working as intended. Uh, next we do our 12. That's not our 12. go. R12. R13 and 14. are 15 and 16. These ones are pretty easy to line up because there's already kind of lines on the ground. Tell you where to do that. Okay, so now the struts, support struts. Very important. So make sure everything comes up right. So, We've done, uh, let's see, R12 through R16. Now we glue R17 through 20, as the instructions say. So 17 and 18, 19 and 20, you're going to glue all those down at the same time, pretty much. That's this little area right in here. This is the trickiest part of this whole setting and it's not really all that tricky because you just need this piece to be folded like this and to go right and sit sit right in there and make a little shelf okay so all these pieces should line up you put glue on seven, 18, 17, 19, and 20 
Okay, spread them around a little bit, get them so they kind of start the drying process before you put anything down. Make sure your hands are clean because you're going to be holding this for a few seconds. And then slide it all into place. The textures will match up on the rocks. And on the bottom, fold the whole thing flat while you can. Make sure you push down. You should have scored a line. You should have scored a line right along here so that this will fold in half down the middle into two into two triangles, okay? So watch it as it folds. It should fold right in half there. And it should open up. Now if it doesn't stick the first time, that's fine. As long as we know that it folds right, we can glue it back in place a little bit. Hold it there. Two, three, Okay. All right, so that's looking good. Let's go ahead and do our 21 through 28. So let's look at the back of our sheets here. And we should have an R21 and 28. And both of those will be folded up. Uh, valley fold style. You glue it on the back here. And then there. So again, fold it each time. Make sure that the pieces are in the right place as you fold. Maybe let your glue dry a little more than I did. Let's zoom out so you can actually see what I'm talking about at this point. Keep forgetting to do that. All right, so as you fold it, you'll see how the piece is gonna push against the other piece. Sometimes it's helpful just to fold the whole thing flat and open it part way. Just let the parts kind of dry part way. Although, looks like this one has shifted a little unintentionally. I don't like that. So I'm going to shift it back. Try folding it again. This time, strict instructions not to shift. It's going to keep shifting until I fix this piece on the other side. Okay, if something's shifting out of place, fix it, you know? Don't let it stay out of place. It should go in place and it should work. So, there you go. Alright, that'll work fine once it's dried. Let's do R27 and R28. Glues right. In there for R twenty seven. It looks like R twenty eight goes here. And it's okay if you see a little piece hanging off that you that looks a little weird to go ahead and slice that so it lines up with the edge. All right, R twenty three and twenty four. up there. Make sure that lines up there. Hold that in place while it dries. Okay. 
Okay. And then 26 and 27. Six lines up right with the edge. Oh, this is 25 and 26, sorry. <laughs> Alright, so. Uh, that goes right there. Okay, we'll let that dry a few seconds. Take a look at everything, make sure it looks like it's. Lining up okay, bending in the right spots. Looks good on this end, let's see if it folds flat. And this piece is gonna wanna come up a little bit, it's okay. We'll make sure that it ends up in the right spot. All right, now one last thing I like to do is to trim the edges. And also, let's make sure that any places where the edges are coming up, apparently I didn't glue this one as well as I wanted to. It's fine. I can always glue them down at the end. So any places where the edges are coming up, don't be afraid to just throw some more glue in there. Make sure it's all flat and clean. And then uh, all I have to do is one more fold, make sure everything's working properly. Pops up, folds down. Uh, great, let's try it next to one of our other uh, terrain pieces that we made earlier. Okay. Here we have the gazebo. Alright. Put it next to it. Nice seamless transition between the two. It's right from one to the other. The gazebo and the rocky terrain next to each other at last. Alright. So that's our, uh, that's our tutorial for this time, folks. Hope you enjoyed watching and working along with us, and uh, hope you enjoy putting together your pop-up terrain. Thanks a lot.